March 14, 2005. Could we have the roll call, call by the town clerk, please? Chairman Swift Kayaga? Here. Councilor Backer? Here. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor Lynch? Here. Councilor McKinney? Present. Councilor Moles? Here. Councilor Roberts? Present. Town Manager? Well, yeah. And the town clerk? Here. Okay, thank you. Time for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reports and correspondence. Are there any counselors who would like to make reports? Councilor Roberts. I would only like to mention that the boys high school hockey team is meeting tonight in Lewiston against Winslow for the state final and uh, here we are sitting here rather than up there. So we do have to make our sacrifices. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure we wish them every success. Um, any other reports or correspondence? Okay, hearing none, moving on. Town manager's report. <laughs> I'm blinded now. Should have, warned, you should have warned me before you pulled that away. I'm sorry. I'll move. Jeff, do you want to hit the last? Uh, I've gotten an awful lot of questions about where we stand with the winter, and <laughs> it's, it's been very challenging. I get, this is based on some information I got from Bob Malley today, our director of public works. Uh, usually, in the average winter, we have about 14 plowable events. So far this year, we've had 21 plowable events, and unfortunately, they haven't been daytime storms. There have been many, many weekends and many, many uh, nights as well. The, the uh, last holiday we had on uh, uh, President's Day, there was, there was a snowstorm, so they're all coming at overtime. Uh, the problem we're now projecting is about a $74,000 uh, problem. That includes, it includes a number of things. It not only includes the bad winter, but it also includes two other things. The, the major increases in uh, fuels above what we budgeted. We had budgeted a dollar per gallon for most everything. We're paying up to about a dollar sixty at this point. And also salt came in way, way above projections, ten dollars a ton, which is, is very significant. Uh, the salt budget, Bob is estimating, we're over by forty-three thousand. Over time would be over a lot more, uh, except for the fact that uh, the guys are just working so much that they're trying to take some compensatory time uh, because they're just wiped and exhausted because you know they've been working so hard. Uh, some of them went in, uh, you know, Friday at the beginning of this last storm and worked right through Saturday night. Went home for a short time, came back out Sunday. It's really been been never ending. Uh, Part-time payrolls up, vehicle maintenance because of all the wear and tear is up. As mentioned, the different tools, it adds up to uh, $74,000. The, uh, in addition to that, you know, I, I think it's important that you also look at some of the other costs. Uh, we're seeing, obviously, the employees, uh, you know, as I mentioned, are, are exhausted. Uh, the, the gentlemen at Public Works who do this. Uh, you know, it's just never ending. We were seeing more illnesses of employees. There's the possibility of some plow damage we haven't seen. Uh, unfortunately, this weekend, one of our trucks backed up into someone. Uh, those accidents happen from time to time. Uh, so, you know, while insurance will pay for it, it's very unfortunate uh, for that for that individual. The truck backed up into them. The driver just didn't see the vehicle. Uh, we're also seeing some of our other revenues down. Uh, excise tax. People aren't buying cars because. Uh, they're uh, home every weekend. People usually go out on Saturdays and uh, look at cars, and th that isn't happening. Uh, some of the building activity is, is, is trending down with, uh, there's just a whole lot of, not a whole lot of new construction. Except, interestingly enough, people are escaping the winter uh, by using the pool more, <laughs> and we're seeing a lot more activity in the pool. But it's been challenging. Uh, the, the direct cost is $74,000. And it, in addition, you know, I think everyone's ready for spring. Uh, we're looking at possibly another snow event uh, this coming weekend, uh, and uh, it's it's been uh, it's been a challenge. I think that the the uh, crew at Public Works is 
you know, really hung in there working together and uh, they, you know, when I see them, they all have a pretty good spirit about it and appreciate what they do. So do you have, I'd be happy to answer any questions, Anne, if anyone has any on the questions? winter. Where will the money come from? I, I'll ask one question. Uh, there is no way with the budgets, the way they've squeezed year after year, that we can make up this amount. Uh, this is something that at the end of the year we're just going to have to uh, ask come out of surplus as soon as the, the numbers are known. Uh, it's just as impossible to find $74,000. In addition to, we also, because it's been really cold too, uh, in some of the other departments, we have been fortunate that with a couple of new furnaces, we're doing better with uh, heat, but still that's another issue where we budgeted a dollar and uh, the bills have been up uh, closer to up to 160 a gallon. But the good news is we're doing okay there, for the most part, but the cold is hurting us. That would be my town manager's report, Ian. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Okay, um, citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. If there are any citizens here who would like to come forward and speak about any item that's on, not on the agenda, now's your opportunity. Seeing none, we will move on. Um, the minutes of our February 14th and 16th meetings. I would move for passage. It's been a motion, do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? I have one point on the um, Monday, February 14th meeting, the third page, item number 115, which has to do with the PACS funding of Shore, the Shore Road, Route 77, Scott Dyer Road intersection. It says six yes, one no, and usually we indicate who was the no vote or the minority vote. Mm -hmm. Do we, we recall who that was? Yeah, it was Councillor Fred. Okay, I didn't want to assume, but we'll assume that it was Councillor Fritz, and I would just ask that we amend our motion just to have that little additional piece of information put in. So is that okay with the... Consider it done. Okay, and the seconder? Okay. Um, all in favor of approving those minutes? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, item number 126.0405, receipt of the proposed fiscal year 2006 budget. We have a, a couple of sheets of paper in here that are sort of top line reviews of the budget information. We, we received notebooks that have all that budget information and more than we could ever imagine delving into, I'm sure, um, recently from the manager. And I would ask um, if there is a motion to acknowledge receipt. So moved. Second. And, and refer the budget to Th the finance committee. Thank you. As Second. well as the special funds. Thank you. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. Go right ahead. Got to, get, got to give you a warning. <laughs> sorry, Mike. Didn't no realize. Problem. Yeah, I, I thought it might be helpful, particularly because there's a lot of percentages and a lot of numbers floating about, to do a very quick overview uh, of the proposed budget. Uh, the town council had set a target a town spending of 3.3 percent the budget meets that target school spending is up 3.3 percent for their regular operations and also an additional 2.42 percent for the school project when you look at that the county everything else it's up about 1.3 million dollars or 4.85 percent including the new school project municipal revenues are up about two percent school revenues are up nearly 15 percent as a result of additional state funding for education Overall, 
revenues from other than the property tax are up about six and a half percent. For from taxation from the property tax, the proposed municipal tax rate is up ten cents or three point one one. Because of the additional school revenue from the state, even with the project, the school tax rate is up just a little over three percent. The overall tax rate, if it wasn't for an issue with the homestead exemption, would be up three percent or forty six cents. And I'll go into that homestead exemption point. But one reason I really wanted to go over this this evening. The state has expanded the homestead. I apologize for sitting. I'm trying not to block the audience back. The state has expanded the homestead exemption to the first thirteen thousand dollars of property value for Maine resident taxpayers for their principal residence. However, the state is only going to reimburse the expense for half of the exemption. We must raise the other half for the first time this year. In order to provide, that's a two hundred forty eight thousand three hundred dollar bill. It adds twenty cents to the tax proposed tax rate and therefore provides an overall tax rate increase of four point three percent. So what this means is those who do not receive the homestead exemption under all of these proposed budgets would see their tax bill go up four point three percent. Mike, how does that fit into the no new unfunded mandates? I, I, I don't find state policy, Jack. They haven't. You haven't heard how they're explaining that one away. Then I take it. I haven't heard that yet. No. Interestingly enough, if you look at the current budgets as proposed, but this is the budget as proposed by the superintendent of the school board as I'm proposing to you, the county and the community services. I, I just got their budget today. So this is, you know, it might be a few pennies off for a home that gets the homestead exemption. One hundred and sixty thousand valuation. Their bill will actually go down a little over one percent. The median home at two hundred and fifty one thousand. Their tax bill, which, you know, good size tax bill will would change four dollars going down. You know, really about the same. It's only when you get up to an eight hundred and twenty thousand dollar valuation home that you reach the three percent level that the budget would otherwise be. Because what the homestead exemption does is it that twenty cents. Everyone pays that. But then those that get the two thousand four hundred ninety properties that receive the homestead exemption get the real benefit from it. So but it does cause, you know, like the in by the sea, Haven Health Care and those that have this not as the principal residents, brand new residents, their bills would go up a little over four percent. But main resident tax payers, principal residents, they have to be they have a house value of more than eight hundred twenty thousand to go up over three percent. Mike, is the exemption phased out at certain valuation levels? No, it's a thirteen thousand dollar exemption across the board that replaces last year's phase out. And that's why when there's a spreadsheet there, you see that some that there's a lot of variances in those lower levels because of the old phasing policy as as to its impact. Mike, the you said there are almost twenty five hundred properties that will receive the homestead exemption. Correct. Do you know how many about how many properties there are in town? There's about four thousand properties overall. OK. Including vacant lots, including commercial properties and including individuals who have these as second homes or or not as the principal residents. The folks that that are Florida residents that, you know, live here part of the year. And those twenty five hundred properties, are those the properties that are eligible to get the homestead exemption? I mean, do people just get it automatically or do they have to apply as they have had in previous years? Thank you. During the first year, you need to apply in the first instance. And we do we do send folks the forms for those that are the newer residents and you have to have lived in Maine at least a year. Thank you. The highlight municipal budget itself, personnel costs are up a little about one percent. A number of positions were eliminated last year during the fiscal year as there were vacancies. The pool fitness administrator, the animal control officer, Harry Proudman's old position, those are all gone in this budget. Health insurance costs, we're all talking about health insurance in part because of two less full-time positions plus that we only had a one percent increase. 
uh, health insurance costs are down $10,000 in this budget compared to a year ago. Retirement costs are up quite a bit, primarily because if you look at what we actually spent the last two years, we've discovered that we weren't budgeting enough. That's not, there's been more employees that have gone onto it over the years, and that is an issue we're looking at as well as to whether or not it, it even might be beneficial to go back into the Main State Retirement System. We are now, in fact, looking at that as, as a consideration uh, that will be coming back to you at some point. Most salaries and wages in the municipal budget are up 2.5%. There are a number of positions that are up more because they're in the lowest quartile of comparable communities, and those you'll see as we review the individual budgets. Uh, debt service costs is down almost 80,000. RWS fees, Carol, are down 21,350. Uh, demolition disposal fees are down. Animal control costs are down as a result of uh, having uh, the, the cooperative arrangement with the city of South Portland on that, and as I mentioned, health insurance. Uh, one of the, the biggest adjustment in the budget overall is going uh, on an upward uh, adjustment is the capital outlay. This is, uh, I'll go over the list briefly in a minute. This is for different equipment replacements. 56% of the net total increase in the municipal budget is that $144,000. Uh, there's an estimated cost of $9,100 or a dollar per capita for having either Scarborough or South Portland take over as our PSAP. Uh, salt, as I mentioned earlier, has gone up the unit cost. That's not for any additional salt, it's just the unit cost going up. Heating and motor fuels, diesel, gasoline, are up about 34,000, and there is 10,000 in the proposed budget for the 2006 Family Fund Day, reflecting the, the recent council vote for 2005, assuming you might want to consider it for 2006. Uh, capital outlay, uh, roadway and drainage projects, you've already seen some of those. We're continuing to need to address code deficiencies at the Fort Rental Buildings to address some issues with the library and the town hall. Uh, this is the year we replaced two police cruises instead of one. One of our transfer trailers is, is uh, due for replacement. Uh, the repairs for two different fire trucks, the amount you see, uh, for a pickup and a plow replacement, 25,000 sidewalk repairs, which is a little increased. And would like to mention, if you're used to seeing the hazardous materials collection day in the Greenbelt Trail Park in the capital improvement section of the budget. Those have now been placed in the individual budgets as a result of the council discussion earlier years, but if HAZMAT's going to be done every year, it ought to be in the operating budget and not in the CIP, so that's now in the refuse disposal account. The Greenbelt Trail work is now in the parks account, uh, with the sense that maintaining the Greenbelt every year is, is as important as maintaining ball fields and other things. Uh, just in closing, uh, the council will be meeting as a finance committee, meeting to, uh, on March 30th to review the administration accounts, the public safety accounts, the human service accounts, the library, and uh, the, some of our facilities. On April 4th, uh, David Backer, the chairman of the Finance Committee, will be leading you in a discussion of the public works, different accounts, and the parks accounts. On April 6th, uh, you'll be you will be reviewing the special funds and the community services account. And this is the next is different from what we've done in the past. On the 13th, uh, you'll be reviewing the school budget, and at the close of that evening, it's proposed that you meet to set a public hearing on the budget. And instead of having, there was some discussion earlier of not having the public hearing and the budget adoption on the same night. You originally, in, in your schedule, had a finance committee meeting on April 25th. Under this schedule, you'd have a public hearing on the proposed budget that evening, uh, the 25th of April, and then you'd still move toward a, a potential budget adoption on May 9th. That concludes my presentation. And be happy to, we'll be reviewing this with the Finance Committee quite a bit uh, in accordance with the motion you just adopted. But uh, uh, just wanted to give everyone highlights, particularly explain that homestead exemption and how it works. I'm sure that's going to be confusing to a lot of folks. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Are there any uh, further questions from the Council on this brief overview? Um, I would appreciate receiving these slides either as a printout. Um, or even as an email attachment, mm -hmm. if we yeah, could. I'll, I'll, before you leave tonight, I'll give it to you as a printout because I'm afraid a lot of folks on a PowerPoint on the computer and uh, it might be difficult to send as an email. That would be great. Thank you. So you'll provide that to everyone in the council? I'll do it this evening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to uh, sort of whip through this item. I didn't That's realize okay. that you were going planning on doing it. Thank you very much. That was... Um, 
quite comprehensive and I think gave us a good sense of the, the issues that we will be facing in the upcoming budget se um, season and uh, as always our budget meetings which will be led by our finance chair David Backer are open to the public. Um, they are not public forums but they are open for the public to come and attend and then there will be opportunity for public input at the public hearing at the end of the process. So, so anybody who's interested, come on down. Thank you. Okay. Um, item number 127, Appointments Committee. Do we have our Appointments Chair, a report to make? Yes, you have your Appointments Chair with a report to make. Thank well, you. Uh, this last fall we met to look at our different boards and commissions at that time, we did not fill all of the seats on the Arts Commission. We recently held a series of interviews, and uh, we are truly very fortunate for all the great people that come down and apply for these positions, which makes it really hard for the committee to pick between them. Uh, but pick we must, and pick we did, and we have uh, three appointments to put forward. The first one is to complete an uh, unexpired term. Uh, we have asked the council to uh, select Pamela Stevens for that. The second one, the next two are full three-year terms that expire December 31st, 2007, and we've put forward the names Stephen Pop and Sarah Lennon. And uh, I motion that the council approve these appointments. Thank you, Councillor Moles. Is there second. a second? Is there discussion? Councillor Lynch. Um, I would just add that we interviewed eight people and they were absolutely wonderful. The difficulty was choosing three of the eight. So um, I would just encourage those people who um, are not getting appointed this time to apply again or to keep looking at what other boards and commissions came up because we just had the wonderful problem of having eight extremely competent dedicated citizens who are interested in serving. Great. And I thank them for applying. Great. Any other comments? All in favor? It's unanimous. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity while we're on this item having to do with appointments to announce that um, as the council uh, uh, decided last month, we are going to be um, setting up a comprehensive planning committee to do a new comprehensive plan. The town council members will be Marianne Lynch and myself and I would also la like to ask Deborah Lane to step forward and tell us there are numbers of uh, other representatives from other boards who will be on that group um, and perhaps some of those folks have been chosen already and I would like to thank all the councillors who are interested in this position. Everyone brought a variety of talents and experiences and previous experiences to the job and um, I'm sure Councillor Lynch and I will look forward to the process. Ms. Lane. Thank you very much. Um, recently in the Cape Courier and the Current, um, the announcements were made from the Comprehensive Planning Committee and the Spurring Church Study Committee. We have been receiving applications. Currently we have seven for the Comprehensive Planning Committee and one for the Spurling Church Study Committee. There will be four selected for the comp plan and seven for the Spurling Church Study Committee. Um, also, the um, Appointments Committee will be filling the uh, one additional slot on the Board of Assessment Review. We do have interview dates set up, and I will be contacting folks beginning tomorrow, those that are already applied. Friday, March 25th, is the deadline for applications from the Comp Plan Committee and Spurling. Spurwink Church Study Committee. Applications are online. Um, if you'd like to um, apply online, or they can call me and um, get an application, and I'll be happy to send it to them. So okay. again, Friday, March 25th. And are there have any of the other board members? Perhaps I missed this. I'm sorry. I was I was making a comment to the, to the manager. Are there other board members that have been chosen? I mean, other committee members that have been chosen already from. Um, the planning board or? The only one that I have is Elaine Maloney for school board. For school board, okay. She'll be, so she will be the school board representative on that. Correct. Group. And I'm waiting for the others. I know Maureen O'Mara has um, okay. uh, put out the word to the other various boards. Okay, great. Thank you very much for that report. 
Okay. Um, and I do want to just add uh, to Councillor Moles's remarks that um, the, the town is very lucky to have so many people who have volunteered uh, to serve in these on these var this variety of boards and commissions. And on behalf of the town, I'd like to thank them and add to Councillor Lynch's and Councillor Moles's remarks. Item number 128, the 2005 dog warrant. Is there anything the town clerk would like to say about this? This is an annual warrant. Um, I, I can say that a year ago in April, the council considered this same, same item we do on an annual basis. At that time, we had 151 names. We've been really busy, and our, our animal control officer has been aggressively um, finding dogs that have been licensed, and we have 90 names. So I think we're making progress <laughs> from last year. 90 names who are? That are on warrant, the list of names that I've Okay, the, the late list. We have a list here that's provided. Um, thank you very much. Do I hear a motion? I move we approve the annual mm -hmm. dog warrant. I second the motion. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion or questions? Councilor Fritz? I'm wondering whether we know whether these people do indeed have dogs or whether, I mean, sometimes dogs die and they may not have the dog anymore. We sent out over 560 cards in January, just a friendly reminder. Um, I personally made several phone calls. Uh, we've been doing cross checks as far as folks that are no longer registered to vote. Um, I think we've pretty much got the list down to the skinny um, of those that aren't licensed. Okay. Any other? Yes, Councilor Roberts. I thought I might try to get my name on that no list again. They get your name in the in the record that way, anyway. <laughs> but the uh, dog licensing requirement is absolutely great. I have no problems with that. As everybody knows, the uh, dogs get their shots. They uh, they get their tags. They get to find their way home if they're straying around and get picked up. My concern is that it's a discriminatory tax that only hits one group of pet owners. And it can be documented in our own budget that the feline pets cost the town, I believe it's three times as much as it does to take care of the dogs. Primarily because most uh, cat owners, for some reason or another, do not try to pick up the animals. They just assume they're dead or roaming the streets or something. They can't be taken to the, veterinary, to the uh, shelter without going through the vet cost the town $70 every time we pick up a, a cat that we don't know who the owner is and then it costs us to house these animals for for a long time and at some point uh, when I'm no longer on the council I may even refuse to pay it just to make an issue of it that way but for the time being all I can do is vote against it as a discriminatory tax so I will be voting against it again this year thank you for your annual remarks on this subject <laughs> Councillor Roberts is there anyone else who would like to add I have Councilor to say Fritz. I agree with Councillor Roberts. I, I will vote in favor of it, but I and I do have a cat and a dog, so. Um, um, I Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Beck. Well, despite the fact that I will be voting in favor of it, I want it known that I do not, by my affirmative vote, intend to impugn the character of any of the animals on this list, some of whom I know personally, <laughs> I know to be of good character, and had they uh, had the ability to take it upon themselves, I'm sure they would be licensed. Thank you for that <laughs> endorsement. But as that to the comments of discrimination against felines, is that a matter to, is that a suggestion to be referred to the ordinance committee on some basis? It's state law. It's a state law. Purely state? The state issue. We have no control over it locally. We, do. we can we ask could lobby. our state reps to lobby on this matter. That's, that's what we should do. But we would have to decide if we would want to ask them to make that their, is, their burning issue. Councilor Moles. Only slightly off topic. Since we're talking about dogs and pets, um, for, for those of you in the viewing public at home that, that don't realize, there's actually a bill in front of the state legislature this year to require manufacturers of uh, antifreeze to add denatonium benzoate 
a bittering agent to antifreeze sold uh, in Maine. Because as many of you may know, antifreeze is a very deadly poison to pets. It's very sweet tasting. If you spill it on your driveway, uh, just a few licks from a cat and it will kill the cat. Uh, and the same, same for a dog. Uh, so you should keep an eye on that. It's going through in Augusta. The manufacturers of the uh, antifreeze are, are opposed to, to adding this, but it's already been approved in California, um, another state, I think it was Oregon, and it's heading to the governor's desk in New Mexico. But, you know, if you're concerned about your pets, 10,000 pets a year die from eating antifreeze. 16 people a year die from eating antifreeze. <laughs> Only one of them was unintentional. But uh, it is a very deadly poison, and it adding this bittering agent may help prevent quite a few uh, needless deaths among pets. Thank you very much for that information. Are there other comments? Okay, hearing none, all in favor of approving the dog warrant? Six, opposed? One, Councillor Roberts. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, the next item is item number 129, having to do with the animal control agreement with South Portland. Would the manager like to introduce this? Yeah, just uh, very pleased with the cooperation that South Portland has provided. I've signed this agreement uh, subject to council authorization. Uh, it provides that South Portland will provide services for $163.79 per week from January 1 of this year to June 30 and one hundred and seventy dollars and four cents per week uh, from July 1 2005 to June 30 2006 thank you I move that we approve the interlocal agreement with South Portland for the services of an animal control officer second and moved and seconded is there discussion or question Councilman I'm just Fritz? wondering is that a certain number of hours per week is that yeah it, it it's calculated on that but it, it's a fluctuating number of hours depending on the need. Some, some weeks we get more hours of service. It's not a set amount. It's, it's based on an average throughout the year. Councilor like, McKinney? Yeah, I'd like to commend the manager in, in, uh, doing, in setting up this policy with South Portland. I think this is a great example of uh, you know, local government working well and finding ways to save money and get the job done. Also, Chief Williams has worked hard on this. But I would like to point out that you know there were other side things. The animal control officer in Cape Elizabeth was not simply an animal control officer. He also shoveled steps. He was a custodian, and you know just we were kidding at the department head this meet, department head meeting this morning. You know things like shoveling off the front steps. Neil Williams came in on Sunday to do that. You know no no pay for it. No uh, you know the chief of police and you know Deborah's done it a few times. I've done it. Others, Bob Malley's done it at 2 a.m. You know, other people are picking up, you know, and you wonder, you know, we've come to the situation, you know, and this is why, you know, everyone looks we ought to regionalize, but then you don't have anyone to shovel off the, front, the, the town hall steps. Uh, so, you know, I, I appreciate the comment, but I do want to point out that sometimes these things aren't as, as good as they appear. I have, I have a question, Mike. Um, you put down the, the costs for the services for these two periods. How does that compare with previous costs, the previous payments to South Portland, and also how does it compare to having our own it's about, officer? It's about a 3% increase, and it saves us $20,000, uh, a little under $20,000, compared to what the cost was last year. But again, we're not getting services, some of the services that we're getting with uh, some of the other duties that the animal control officer did. When you say 3% increase, you mean 3% over the previous That's agreement? Right. Okay. That's right. Okay, other questions? Okay, I see none. Um, all those in favor of approving the agreement? Seven, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, the next item is item number one, 300405 proceeds from sale of property. Uh, there was a uh, draft policy enclosed for the town council consideration. Is there anything that the manager would like to say about this? No, it just provides that after you have the net, in, net 
proceeds. You you pay the cost that uh, any uh, after you pay the cost, any net proceeds would be equally divided between the land acquisition fund and the general fund, and this would apply for apply to both properties acquired through foreclosure and properties required other than foreclosure. There is another proposed uh, proposal here that sometimes we may sell property with an improved structure when we're doing a successor building structure project, and in those instances, uh, those funds, net proceeds, and ex uh, following the cost would be used for the for, for cost related to the successor structure. Okay. Uh, for example, when we bought the new community center, you sell the old one, the, the new money goes into the new community center instead of being equally divided up. Okay. Do I do I hear a motion? I move that we uh, accept the uh, draft policy as, as the policy for uh, use of proceeds from the sale of property. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion or questions? You might reference you did discuss this at a workshop. This was discussed at a workshop. It's been through several drafts, just for, so the public will will understand. Um, the drafts aren't that different from what came before, but it's been wordsmithed, especially thank you to Councillor Backer, who did his usual good job in cleaning up the language for us to make it much more understandable. So thank you. Um, are there any other comments, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Seven, it's unanimous, thank you. Um, item number 131, which has to do with the sewer rehabilitation report. Mr. Yeah. McGovern? It's recommended that the council set a public hearing for April 11th, the next council meeting, on, on the proposal to rehabilitate certain capables of sewers. In addition, there'll be two neighborhood meetings, uh, one on March 31st uh, that Bob Malley, Steve Harding, and myself will be conducting, and that'll be for folks here in the town center, or particularly uh, Elizabeth Park, and there'll be another one on uh, April 7th uh, that will be, be focused more on all of the roads offshore road uh, down in the northern section of town, and there'll be notices going out to those neighborhoods of the neighborhood meetings as well as of the uh, council public hearing, if, if you were approve this. Okay, thank you. I might add that this is, uh, this sewer rehabilitation report was discussed in some detail at um, a workshop last last month. Um, so the council has been through uh, many of the details of this report. Uh, do I hear a motion? So moved. It's been mm -hmm. moved and seconded. Is there discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor of setting a public hearing for April 11th, 2005. It's seven. It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, the next item is item number 132, having to do with Little League signage. Mr. McGovern? Yes, uh, thank you, Ann. Back in uh, 1997, people with Little League approached the town council about putting up advertising signage at, uh, at Ly the Lion Field Complex, uh, the, sort of those plastic ones you put on the, the fence. There was some <coughs> a lot of discussion at the, the council at the time, and I had thought the council set a policy. I discovered about two weeks ago uh, that the council had, in fact, put it in ordinance form. Uh, about a month ago, I was approached by the Little League saying, can we do it at uh, uh, Place Good Park? And yeah, I said, oh, sure, I don't think it's a problem. I didn't realize that the ordinance was limited solely to Lyon Field. That's why, in, in this case, you know, they really would like to get the revenue uh, for that uh, from for this year. Uh, it is it is something that really helps them to, to, to carry out their expenses. We've never gotten a complaint on any of the signs that uh, that Lyon Field, the program that's worthwhile, and it, you know, it gives a chance for local businesses as well to get some exposure in a, in a, on a temporary basis besides uh, the ordinance. Up and down. I would uh, encourage you, since it is a rather simple amendment when you, when you look at it, uh, that you, you have a public hearing on this uh, next month so that possibly the Little League could move forward with selling this for this upcoming season. Subject to your review. 
Thank you. Do I hear a motion? I'll be happy to make the motion. I would motion that we set the public hearing for Monday, April 11th, a discussion of amending our sign ordinance to allow signage at the uh, place that Park Field. I would second that. And I think it also reverts to Holman Field. And Holman Field. Okay, thank also. you. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Council Fritz. I'd just like to, I, I think the reasoning for this was because Lyons Field is set back, uh, not on the public view as we, we drive down the street. Um, Holman Field would be in a similar situation. You wouldn't see that just driving back and forth. But um, Facebook Park, I mean, I'd be curious um, to hear the comments from people at the public hearing because that the Sun Shore Road there at, at Sherwood Forest right near the entrance to Fort Williams, and it would be quite out in the open, um, and whether people think signs there would be marred be um, so just, just that one. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Uh, Alpha Lynch. I don't mind exposing my ignorance. I don't have any children in Little League. Where is Holman Field? <laughs> uh, Holman Field is the uh, high school baseball field. Okay. And if, if you see, this policy provides that, 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 that the school, uh, you know, the proposed policy uh, would would have the, the right there. It wouldn't, go, it wouldn't be Little League. So it's something that the school could possibly, they couldn't do it this year, it'd be too late. But it's something, you know, in fact, I heard Denny Balladet, one of the superintendent candidates today, uh, said very clearly that the schools need to be looking at other ways of getting money because they shouldn't be expecting it more and more from property tax. And this is something that could help support the, the whatever program the schools would like. Uh, uh, you know, if they wanted to sell the advertising directly or have one of the booster groups do it to help support them. Holman, Holman Field is between the middle school and, okay. I have one other question. Um, if we're doing this or having a public hearing to consider it for these fields, should we also consider putting in, at least for the purpose of the public hearing and gathering public comment, the um, fields up at Goldcrest? I, I, if I might, I didn't include those because there isn't the fencing to put them on. The, the, in these other fields, there's, there's, there's fencing. So we've included every conceivable field that has a fence? Yeah, the, the only one that wasn't, that conceivably would be the soccer, the big soccer field at the, the high school. Because, you know, while they don't have, it isn't close up, they do have distant fences around, around the perimeter. I did not include uh, that one. Should we include that at least for the purposes of the public hearing, getting public comment on it, and, mm -hmm. and then we, you know, we may end up leaving it to the school as an option. But what's your pleasure, Council? I don't have any problem with adding that one. Um, since I get the floor, um, I've never been to any community. That they, where they've had little league games. My kids both played little little league, so we traveled all over the western part of the state to the different uh, towns. Every town that we ever went to had these advertisements on the field. And let's face it, it would help to uh, promote that rural character of Cape Elizabeth. <laughs> the, motion, I, the motion was I made by Councilman Mole. As I made the motion, uh, although I'm not crazy about the idea of putting signage on the soccer field, I'd be more than happy to hear what the public has to say about it at the um, public hearing. So I would amend my motion to allow the discussion of Lions Field, Holman Field, Playstead Park Field, the soccer field, and any other field where we have fencing around them. Okay. And Council Roberts, you were the second. So um, that those are friendly amendments that were accepted. Are, are there other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of um, sending this matter to a public hearing scheduled for April 11th? It's unanimous. Seven. Thank you.
The next matter is item number 1330405, having to do with harbor ordinance amendment. Is that happen after no. here? I can't see behind the machine there. Is there anything you would like to say about this? The new, new Harbor Master has been spending quite a bit of time studying the ordinance and has identified a number of changes that he would like to see. Uh, his forward them to Nikki Williams, Chief Williams, who is his supervisor. He'll forward them to me, and they're now being forwarded to the council and suggesting that you forward them to the ordinance committee. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to that effect? I make a motion. I make the motion that the Harbor Ordinance Amendment, as uh, stated, be forwarded to the Ordinance Committee for review. Thank you. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. Any comments? Councilor Fritz? I'm just curious what the purpose is of um, having the moorings inspected every year and, and the cost that would be associated with for and it would be a new cost for folks, if I understand. Mr. McGovern? Yeah, I don't profess to be an expert on this, but we'll we'll make sure that that issue, you know, if this is referred to the ordinance committee, it gets answered. In other words, there's no one up here who knows the answer to that, <laughs> but we'll, we'll make sure we find out. Councilor Robert. I think it's pretty clear. They get rusty, they break in somebody's boat, then crashes into somebody else's or winds up on shore, and uh, rescue personnel and emergency equipment are all called into task to take care of it and cost the town money when, when somebody doesn't maintain their mooring. Um, okay. okay. But we'll get the official word on it. <laughs> that sounds reasonable. Any uh, further questions or comments? I hear none, so all in favor of forwarding this matter to the Ordinance Committee? It's unanimous, seven. The next one, the next item is item number 1340405, oh, sale of a portion of a lot behind Grover Road. Do I hear a motion? Yes, um, I would move to table this until Wednesday, March 16th, and I understand that we will have a special meeting at that point and go into executive session. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, there's no discussion on tabling items, I believe. So all those in favor? Seven. Thank you very much. I'd just like to mention that, if I might quickly, I know you came with Steve Murray, the, the bitter, uh, and Carol Murray, one of the abutters, are both here this evening. Oh, thank I'm, them for coming. I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize, so thank you very much. I apologize for not noticing. Um, okay, item number 135 agreement with Local 340 of the Teamsters, representing our public works employees. Mr. McGovern. Yeah, the council met a number of times in executive session, providing me the bargaining instructions for uh, meeting with the Teamsters representing our public works employees. I'm pleased uh, that we have a, uh, an agreement uh, subject to your ratification uh, that, that meets your, your guidelines. It provides for 2.5% adjustment in July 2005 and 6, and a 3.5% adjustment on July 1, 2007. However, in July 2007, all employees with single health coverage would be required to pick up 10% of the cost of health insurance premium. Those with uh, single coverage now have 100% of the cost picked up. The health insurance premium sharing for other employees will, will remain at 80-20. There, uh, you know, in addition to that highlight, there's, there's one employee in the bargaining unit, the, the uh, garage foreman, that's a 5% adjustment. Uh, we had discussed that as well because of when we looked at the all the different pay levels, uh, that position was uh, uh, not not in keeping with similar positions in other communities. Uh, there's a couple of minor adjustments of allowances that the council had discussed earlier. And uh, the, the, team, the public works employees met between snowstorms this past week and uh, unanimously voted uh, to approve this contract. The uh, Alan Churchill, the team for 
targeting agent uh, met with them uh, and uh, they voted for approval. Thank you very much, Mr. McGovern. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion that we accept the agreement that uh, the manager has struck with the local 340 of the seniors representing certain public employees in Cape Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? I would like to commend the manager on doing an excellent job in uh, coming up with a, a very, seems to me, a very fair agreement that um, is in line with the needs of the town and of the employees. Thank you. Any other discussion or comment? If my, I think it was a very good process. The Teamsters were good to work with, and I also appreciated the, the good discussion that the council had uh, during the executive session when uh, we met we met on this a couple times over the last few months. And thank the employees of Public Works again for all they do for the community. When I mention those other people shoveling the front steps, they do it as well. So <laughs> should have mentioned that. I'll, I'll hear about that. Careful, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'll be a grievance file. <laughs> Any other comments or discussion? I would just like to echo um, the counselor's remarks and the manager's remarks um, that we we thank the Teamsters and the Public Works employees for the excellent job they do. And um, having said that, all those in favor? Seven. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Well. We've been here an hour, and we're at that point. We, we have citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. It's a second opportunity for citizens. Anybody like to step forward? I see no one rising, so we'll move on. Before we adjourn, I would like to mention that the next council meeting is a workshop on this Wednesday, two days from now, March 16th at 7.30 p.m. Um, the topics will be... Fresh my memory. We'll be you'll be meeting with representatives of the library. Yes. To discuss uh, the new 501c3. Yes. Uh, gift policies as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's do you remember that one? The BA wasn't it? The BA. Oh yes, undersized lots. Undersized lots. Can't wait for that to come. Okay. And then we will also have a special thank you. We will also have a special town council that meeting where we will meet briefly and go into executive session to discuss a possible property sale as we've mentioned earlier in this meeting. Um, the next regular town council meeting is on Monday, April 11th. Um, the finance committee will be starting its series of meetings. David Backer will be running those meetings. And will we be meeting in here or will we be meeting up, meeting in, back. up in the conference room up back? Those meetings will be on March 30th, April 4th, 6th and 13th. On the 13th, we will schedule a public hearing um, on the various budgets to be held on April 25th, and then, then we will be voting in May what, on adopting the budget. So, having said that, uh, Council Moll? One, one quick item since we finished so early, uh, I thought I might mention that the Family Fund Day Committee is going to meet tomorrow night here in the basement of the Town Hall at 7 o'clock. And we would welcome any citizens that have any ideas for Family Fun Day to come on down. And any neighborhoods out there, start thinking about getting your floats ready for the Family Fun Day Parade on Saturday, June 18th. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councilor Moles. Just one thing, so as long as we're disclosing meetings. The school board has invited all the members of the council to public meetings that are occurring at between 3.15 and 4.30, both tomorrow and Wednesday, if any of the councilors wish to attend. Uh, on meeting with superintendent candidates, so I mention that because you know technically, if a if a, if a majority of the councilors were there, that would constitute a public meeting in your part as well. So uh, not that I expect the majority of you there, but just wanted to mention they had a good meeting today with one of the candidates, and uh, I know the school board looks forward to the two visitors the next two days. Thank you, thank you. So, I'll so the, the meeting with one candidate at a time. Yeah, and it's yeah. If I, if I might. And today, the, the Dennis McGallagette was there with the superintendent in Richmond, and he stood out here, and there were probably 20 folks or so, 25 folks, and he gave a few opening comments, and there was a lot of give and take discussion, totally open. A number of newspaper reporters were here taking notes. And questions. It was, it was questions. It was, uh, it was an interesting. Uh, it was an interesting way to see something being done. So. It's an opportunity for the public to come meet the candidates, as I understand it. 
and we, the council, as members of the public, to come meet the candidates. Any other? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. And moved and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.